uh, to this uh, after hours uh, semiotic uh, seminar semi salon and uh, for this uh, final session of the season uh, that has been uh, putting uh, mythocatalysis uh, on the terminological map uh, we are having the meeting in uh, hybrid form so there are people participating online in uh, zoom and uh, they're from all around the world and uh, we are also here uh, in Tartu University Mail Building, uh, from those of you who are in Tartu. So we are very happy to uh, have everyone with us uh, wherever you are. And uh, the session is recorded, so, uh, and it will also be uploaded. So even if you're in Zoom and you don't want your face to be shown, then you know, don't have um, your camera open uh, for questions. Uh, for this uh, final uh, meeting of the, uh, this season's uh, semios along, we have presentations by two, uh, two professors uh, with strong ties to Tartu, uh, Professor Juri Talvet and uh, Jan Valsiner, uh, who will uh, be digging deep uh, into uh, culture, I, I would say. And it, it will definitely be wonderful and uh, uh, poetic, I, I guess. Uh, so the format uh, of the seminar will be so that uh, we'll have the first presentations, uh, first presentation, then uh, questions and discussion, then the second uh, presentation and uh, also questions after that. And everyone is welcome uh, then to either speak out or type their uh, question in the chat. And the first presenter today will be Yuri Dalvet. A literary scholar, a poet, essayist, a translator, professor, and a honorary citizen of Tartu. Uh, he's also the founder and coordinator of a Spanish studies program uh, here. Uh, all of these experiences come together uh, in this uh, presentation today, uh, which is called uh, Tartu 2024, European Capital City of Culture and the invisible roots of Estonian autochthonous national conscience and culture. So the floor is yours. Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening and, and, and yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me, especially the, 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 your, your study mate, uh, Israel Chavez uh, was uh, the man who, who had the idea to invite me, so I'm here, thankful to him. He himself cannot be here, at, as far as I know, and, and um, I'm also very thankful to El Maria for, for helping me in conducting this, this talk. <clears throat> Indeed, indeed, uh, yeah, if you walk around in uh, Tartu and those people who have uh, lived here for some time at least, and, then they notice that there are many monuments and, and, and also the, the, the great uh, letters are show that uh, Tartu would be in 2024 the uh, cultural capital of Europe. Uh, well, uh, 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 still, I suspect that uh, although there is, of course, the university and, and lots of cultural, uh, all kinds of uh, scientific and uh, cultural activity in Tartu, still, especially the, uh, those who do not have access to Estonian language, uh, might have some difficulty in understanding really the significance of Tartu, Tartu and the sign of Tartu. Uh, just uh, because uh, because the <clears throat> the 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 founders the founders uh, of our literature and national conscience uh, they have been uh, dead a long time ago and uh, and their work is here even we the estonians uh, who know our language uh, not often no, not very often <laughs> read the national epic or or maybe also younger people are not uh, very aware of what was really done done some 
So, at the, in the 19th century, above all, during the 19th century, when at the middle of the 19th century, there was the so-called National Awakening. And now I will speak uh, briefly and uh, show some slides um, about uh, those, uh, those uh, personalities, uh, poets, uh, all poets, uh, who had a special significance in in, uh, in the formation of Estonian national autochthonous uh, conscience, conscience. They are not only founders of our literature, they are not only founders of our poetry, but uh, at the same time, as the poetry has been so important, especially in small nations and in the formation of small nations, uh, then, yes, they had a great, a great significance. So, we start uh, from Christian Jörg Pettersson, <laughs> ah, yes, yes, Pettersson, Christian Jörg Pettersson. As you see, uh, this man was, uh, his life is uh, at the start, very start of, of the 19th century, only 21 years, 21 years. But, um, and uh, by the way, by the way, uh, the scarce, uh, really not, uh, big in amount, uh, his, uh, uh, his literary he heritage, uh, his poems, and, uh, and uh, also his uh, diaries uh, were published for the first time only 100 years after his death, after his death, 1922. So, <laughs> all the time of awakening and uh, so on, it was uh, really, uh, people didn't know much about uh, Pettersson. Though, yes, of course, um, they might have known him, something of him as a linguist, a linguist above all, because he's, he was very, very versatile in his interest and absolutely talented, uh, very young and, and talented. Uh, so, um, he uh, was born really in, in Riga, Riga, and all his life was between Riga and Tartu. Uh, Riga, as you know, is the capital of Latvia. Latvia, all that uh, was in those times was Livonia, was called Livonia. It's the, the Russian uh, region called uh, Livonia. It, it uh, embraced the southern part of Estonia and also a part of Latvia, including the capital city R Riga. The first thing uh, to know, of course, uh, is, uh, uh, yes, uh, I, have, I've, I have compared uh, the importance of, of Pettersson, our Pettersson, with uh, the role that uh, Dante Alighieri, the, 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 the founder of, of European literature of modern times, let us say, after the Middle Ages, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the border of Middle Ages and, and uh, modern times, Dante Alighieri, because uh, Dante Alighieri, has, uh, of course, his, uh, <laughs> the topic is uh, immense, but I, I just, uh, these parallels, uh, in some respect, they cannot be compared, but in other respect, they, they, they can be compared. And, they, and in what they can be compared is that both, both expressed uh, their their, their, their deep, uh, deep uh, conviction, deep conviction in the perspective and in the c capacity of, uh, of their national autochthonous language. In, in the case of Dante Alighieri, it was the, the Tuscan or Toscana language uh, I, that became Italian language. So Dante Alighieri wrote this his poetical works uh, in, in Italian language, and he was the founder of European, great European literature, and also is, uh, in, uh, is started to be very influential. Our, our Estonian Peterson could not influence anybody, anybody <laughs> during a long time, but uh, he was the man who voiced uh, the, the uh, conviction his, uh, his faith in the, in, the, in the future of the Estonian language. And, and uh, it is um, among his poems, uh, uh, one especially, the poem that is called the Moon, Moon, Ku in Estonian. That is uh, fundamental, fundamental, and we really can 
called uh, Peterson, a genius and icon of Estonian, uh, Estonian literature, but not only Estonian literature, but I would say Estonian culture and uh, culture and especially our verbal culture. Culture. The man who, despite his young years, uh, knew some could uh, understand and maybe also sp speak some up to nine languages, nine, nine foreign languages in the. In, in this respect, he, 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 he just uh, was uh, superior to Dante Alighieri, who also was very keenly interested in the, in the foreign languages, but uh, probably he, uh, Dante's knowledge of languages was, was uh, more limited. Anyway, uh, that man, Peterson, wrote in Estonian his main poetic work, and now I will immediately just pass on Yes, this is the monument of Peterson in Tartu. Maybe you, you have noticed it if you if you walk around here on the Tome Hillock and then there near the cathedral, the old uh, cathedral in ruins, ruins in part. And this is the this was, but it is relatively new, as you see. It is, uh, was erected in uh, 1983 only, and the sculptor is uh, Jacques Swans. Uh, and but the, the lines, the, the lines are those uh, most significant lines of that the poem, Ku Moon. And I would like to show now. Now these are the only two editions of. Uh, uh, of uh, existing two editions. We are very small culture and we don't have enough people to, to, to deal with, uh, the, with, with uh, thousands of people may deal with the work of Dante Alighieri, but um, Estonian Peterson, we have only two editions of his uh, songs, uh, his diaries and uh, his letters. And the first was, uh, yes, 100 years after his death by Aino Palzer, and the second was uh, 1976 by Karl Taev. I still remember Karl Taev was my professor when I, I entered the University of uh, uh, Professor of Literate uh, Theory. And he prepared also very good editions, so two uh, good editions. And now this is the, the famous uh, poem, the, the beginning part of the, of the famous poem, <coughs> Ku. Peterson uh, is very strange uh, because uh, he did not use the traditional Estonian or Finno-Ugric uh, uh, meter, meter for his poems, and uh, he di did not accept, uh, admit, or adapt either, either the, the forms that were uh, that came from the south of, of Europe. Uh, but he uh, wrote uh, something, yes, uh, wh which uh, certainly had some influence of Goethe, Goethe, Johann Wolfgang uh, Goethe, but, um, but not exactly uh, coinciding. So this is a very original way, and especially original and uh, admirable is that he omits the, the final uh, 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 end uh, rhymes. Uh, of, of the verse lines, the end rhymes of the verse lines that have been very, very deeply rooted in the Estonian poetry later, later. But uh, Peterson, the first Estonian great poet, he wrote without, uh, without the rhymes. He might have been influenced also by ancient poetry because he knew very well Greek and he even taught, taught Greek. He managed even to, to, to teach Greek during his, his small, small, very brief life. Now, kas siis laulu allikas külmas põhja tuules minu rahva meeles see oma kastet ei vala, kas siin lumises põhjas ilusa lõhnaga mirdike, vilusas kalju orus ei või õitseda kauniste, kas siis meie maa keel, mis on kui tasa ojake oma ilu tundes, heinama läbi Siniste taeva kullasest tules rahuga on jooksemas ehk ka toreda häälega oma rammu tundmata taeva müristamisega, kui meri on hüüdmas. Ja now the, the, these important lines, kas siis selle maa keel laulu tuules ei või taevani tõustes üles igavikku endale otsida. Now this is, now he... He, 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 this is, uh, cannot then our native tongue rise in the wind of the song to the heavens and seek for it eternity. And now the end part of that the great poem, uh, end, end of, yes, uh, cease, and, uh, it is a longer, longer poem, but now I, I show only the end part. 
you, you, so you see the, this, let's say, philosophic um, ben, bent uh, inclination in this is absolutely clear. Uh, Peterson, Peterson's uh, had very noble uh, ideas about the existence of a unity of ex existence and existence, and, and that all the living beings uh, have souls, uh, souls, and uh, have soul, and, and uh, not only human beings but animals and the whatever beings, and and uh, so on. Any, anyway, so. Siis ma laulan sind, sind öökuningas kuu, kes saab pilvedes ülest nii kui pungaste lilleke, lõbuse valge palega üles tõuset taeva all, kus tulised tähed maha on langemas sinu eest musta, pimeda uju sisse. Nõnda inimeste vaim, oled sa ujus, ujumas, kui su mõte on otsimas Jumalat tähtede alta. This is the, 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 thing, the, the, the poem here, as you see. Uh, thus you, human spirit, are swimming in the mist as your thought is seeking God from below the stars. This, these are great lines. I doubt if Goethe has any, any poem with such, such emotion and, 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 and great lines, <laughs> indeed. But um, anyway, what I wanted to say that, um, yes, uh, now you also see in uh, even in, the, in this poem, now the novelty of, of Peterson still, although he might, uh, also Goethe had uh, similar, some similar poems, also relatively slender uh, strophe, uh, strender, slender strophe in the, in the sense that uh, the verse lines are very short, short, as you see here, they are short. Uh, but uh, the difference is that, uh, that uh, Peterson uses uh, the phenomenon that is called uh, enjambment. Enjambment that uh, means that uh, uh, syntactic uh, unit, a uh, uh, phrase, uh, 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 goes through the, through the poem without any stop uh, at the end of the verse lines. Uh, the very, very swiftly it, uh, it goes from one line into, uh, to, to another line. And uh, this is, uh, I, I just, uh, siis ma laulan siin öökuningas kuu, kes saab ilvedes ülesse nii kui pungaste lilleke lõbuse valge palega üles tõuset taeval, kus tulisid tähed, maha on langemas sinu edes musta, pimeda uju sisse. Uh, here, but also, here, ah uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, anyway, here is, it is, uh, can be seen that, uh, yeah, Ilusa lõhnagi mirdike, ilusa ei või õitsida kaunista. Ja, anyway, this, this phenomenon of Enjama is uh, original in, in Peterson, and uh, even if, uh, of course, uh, we can say that he was influenced by Goethe, he had his, his own novelty, in my opinion, as far as I know. I know this is Enjama, the, the use of Enjama is absolutely important, and if any, anybody, any scholar would, uh, would, uh, would uh, try, try to reconstruct the history of this free, this practically, it is free, unrhymed verse, of in, free, unrhymed verse, then our Peterson was surely among the introducers, uh, among the pioneers of using that uh, verse form that has uh, now, in, no in nowadays, uh, is, uh, is uh, very widely spread and uh, we take it as a natural, but in those times, and though at the start of the 19th century, the, the time of romanticism, it was still, still uh, very, very new. Later came Walt Whitman and so on. But, um, but uh, and, and just to give you uh, some uh, key points, uh, some, uh, some points of contact, uh, Keith uh, Peterson was the, uh, absolutely, uh, his uh, life coincided with, it, uh, with uh, that of, for instance, uh, the British uh, John Keats. Uh, Keats, they were very close, and both uh, died very, very young, and both now <coughs> are very influential. So, although, uh, Keats, of course, uh, in the English, uh, thanks to English, is, is worldwide known. But now our, our Peterson, gradually, he may be known more. If we translate some of his poems and so on, these are my tra um, translated by myself and my um, good, uh, faithful American friend, poet and philosopher, Harvey L. Hicks. Hicks. And now one more. 
last thing more, one more poem of, I show of Pettersson. He has also had, he wrote kind of a idyllic um, pastoral poems uh, and, uh, and whose, uh, whose uh, <clears throat> characters were Estonian, uh, simple Estonian uh, peasants, uh, peasants, uh, boys and uh, girls. Uh, and, uh, so he, uh, this, uh, pastoral poems, but also he has one humorous, in part humorous, but also with a kind of a philosophic accent here, the poem Nized Woman. He, Peterson has, a, of course, a lot of is dedicated to his, uh, his friend and sometimes uh, late researchers think that uh, this may be homosexual mo motives, etc. But now what is, uh, what is uh, Peterson says about uh, a woman? woman. Härgaden on sarved, kaabiad on hostellagi, jäne selle jalad, karula on hambad, ujumas on kala, lendas linnukene, meestel on mõistus. Kus on naised jäänud? Mis on naistel? Ilu! Mõõka asemella, oda asemella, naine ilus olles võidab tulda ära. This is something, in my opinion, absolutely a great, great attitude that now we are fighting very much for, 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 for just accepting women as equal of men and, and so on. But uh, Peterson says very, very briefly what is essential while while man produces fire, <coughs> fire, fire, and fire is for destruction, then woman, woman is over man, is uh, superior to man. Uh, the beauty, uh, thanks to her beauty, and with her beauty, uh, beauty is the source of creativity. So, cattle have horns, horses have hooves, rabbits have feet, the bears have teeth, fish swim, birds fly, men have reason. Where does that leave women? What do women have? Beauty instead of sword, instead of lance. In, in beauty, woman exceeds fire. This is the, um, all the philosophy in a short poem. But uh, of course, um, my topic is uh, <laughs> very long, and so I, I now uh, pass on and go on to to the next <clears throat> author, that is the, it is, uh, uh, his, uh, his influence was, uh, was great immediate, uh, not immediate, but uh, um, at least uh, during his lifetime, this is Friedrich Reinhold Kreisfeld. I haven't uh, mentioned a very important uh, thing here uh, in the case of Peterson also, but also in, in Kreisfeld. Estonian people, uh, until the abolition of serfdom, serfdom in, in, in Tsarist Russia, it uh, all we, uh, we, we uh, Livonia was part of, Estonia and Livonia were part of, of Russian, the Russia, Russian Empire, and at the start of the 19th century, only serfdom, a kind of a, a type of a slavery, was abolished in, in, in Tsarist Russia. And before that, Estonian, Estonians, uh, during centuries, Estonian, Estonians were peasants, simple, humble peasant people. They didn't have family names. The family names they uh, acquired only, obtained only at the start of the 19th century. I too, the same. Um, I, um, I know my, my family lines only, um, my, my, my family names um, that go down to that uh, 19th, uh, start of 19th century, but I don't know anything about my predecessors who were before that. They were simply called by, by first names, by first names uh, and nothing more, and maybe some place name there uh, connected with that, but anyway, and the, and the landowners we, who, were, who were the, the lords, uh, were, were the, the Baltic German landowners, who were basically Baltic German landowners, but also Scandinavian, who were the lords of this country, they gave a name to their, their former slaves, and so, uh, former serfs, yes, that's yes, yes, uh, serfs. Uh, uh, Kreuzwald's uh, f uh, parents were serfs, and also uh, Peterson's uh, father 
would have been uh, would, uh, would have been a uh, uh, serf, but uh, he managed. Petr's father managed to escape serfdom by uh, by uh, going to Riga, and then he uh, had uh, had uh, some occupation there at the church as a singer. And and, and uh, so anyway, uh, Petterson had a better fate. Uh, Petterson was not uh, a serf. Uh, but, uh, and and uh, Friedrich Reinhold Kreuzfeld, as you see, in German names, because the landlords, they gave uh, often German names, and sometimes they gave Estonian names, but very often German names, uh, then, then uh, they were Estonians, autochthonous Estonians, but uh, they had uh, German names. So uh, Christian uh, 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 Jörg Petterson, Friedrich Reinhold Kreuzfeld, and so on. So uh, this is the... Uh, this is the and uh, Kreuzfeld, as you see, he he lived the longer. He lived the, in parallel with Victor Hugo. Their, their uh, life lives uh, coincide more or less to compare with uh, uh, French literature. Uh, Victor Hugo. So he was there. I was there when also Goethe was there. But of course, he later started to create his uh, his works and. Um, and Greifswald, uh, yes, Greifswald, uh, Greifswald's uh, monuments are in many parts. Um, uh, he he lived the, the last part of his life in Tartu, but um, but he was uh, born in the um, northeastern part of uh, well, northern part of Estonia, uh, and then after. After that, he tried to go to study medicine in, in, in St. Petersburg, but was, was, not, was not accepted, uh, admitted there, because uh, he was of lower, humble origin of, uh, of the uh, son of serfs. And then he uh, could enter Tartu University. He graduated as a medical doctor from Tartu University. And then for 40 years, entire 40 years, he really lived and worked uh, as uh, helping simple peasant people, Estonian peasant people, in Varu, 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 that uh, southern Estonian uh, remote, uh, very feral town, Varu, where Kreuzfeld basically wrote his epic that we ca now call national epic, Kalevi poet, the son of Kalev. So we Estonia, Estonians have, thanks to Kreuzfeld, a work of, of, of really world importance um, now by today in its complete form in 20 songs, 20 songs uh, in verse, of course, verse epic and 20 songs uh, completed, complete, uh, translated uh, into a dozen languages, uh, so some 12, 12 of 13 languages in fully, but uh, also there are many, very many adaptations uh, and uh, abbre abbreviated versions and so on. And so in the language of Israel Chavez, uh, there is uh, <laughs> also Kalevi Poeg published in Madrid in Spain, but uh, this is not uh, the real verse epic, but this is a summary of the verse epic. However, even the summary of the verse epic by a British uh, uh, entomologist, uh, mologist, and folklorist uh, 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 Kirby, Kirby, William Kirby. He, it was um, uh, published in English uh, at, the, at the end of the 19th century, and now a young uh, Spanish man has translated Kirby's uh, summary in prose uh, of Galavoy into Spanish, and for the, let's say, the first introduction, it somehow, yes, it is, um, it is quite good, but uh, of course it uh, cannot uh, replace the, the epic, the, uh, the verse epic uh, of Greuzfeld's um, Kalevi poem. Now this is the monument in Tartu. You may see it on the, on the, on the river side of, of the river Emma Yagi, Yagi, and also this is, there is opposite to him is the main hero of Kalevi poem, the of the epic. Um, and uh, and this is uh, Kreuzfeld's monument in uh, in Varu. Varu. If you uh, there is a lake and the lake and on, on the on the bank of the lake there is the the the, the Tabula Lake uh, 
in, uh, from tw 1926, uh, the monument by uh, sculptor Amandus Adamson, one of the most important uh, sculptors Estonia has had, and, and he was very successful. He made also sculptures for uh, Petersburg uh, and, and for uh, that, uh, the uh, emperor's uh, family and so on, so on. Amandus Adamson and the Rusalka monument in, Tar in, in Tallinn, Tallinn, Tallinn Bay is also by Amandus Adamson. But now, uh, now these are, there are many editions of Kalevbaik and Kalevbaik's uh, First edition edition was uh, was uh, with a parallel uh, German translation, and this parallel German translation helped very much uh, uh, to 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 sp uh, to spread so spread the 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 uh, the, uh, the the work uh, just uh, the, in the same way as the Finnish epic uh, Kalevala was first translated into. Swedish and uh, and then uh, German and, and and so on and uh, and uh, Kalevala by today is uh, is uh, translated into some uh, uh, some 50, 50 languages of the world. Our the fate of our Kalevala has been more modest modest, but still I would say uh, Kalevala is the is the uh, the almost the only Estonian literary work uh, that is uh, firmly in the canon of world literature and in all on the world literature dictionaries you can find it and so it is there is some mention at least if not more and it's it is uh, being translated and uh, new there is uh, there are several translations now in English and uh, one translation in French uh, relatively new translation and it is being translated even among the Last translation, a Hindi translation, the second Latvian translation in our days. It, is, it, it, it goes on. And Kreuzwald, by the way, when he was, had a good sense of humor, and he, of course, uh, was very skeptical, uh, skeptical, uh, really. But he humorously he said that, uh, that my work uh, uh, will be read a thousand years after me after me still w would be found on the bookshelves of, of people of, um, among people when people really don't know anything about the Estonian language so he was also very uh, convinced that uh, that uh, the epic still would gradually uh, spread uh, and uh, it really has spread in in the world it is a low process uh, and those uh, who translate epics are real her cultural heroes, I, I would say. Uh, but uh, the, the work is, uh, is worthwhile, even though we understand perfectly that uh, all this, uh, <laughs> uh, this uh, finno um, um, traditional forms, uh, verse forms, uh, they, they uh, hardly can transmit it ideally into other languages. But now uh, let us see what I have here. And the Christian Raud is now the, maybe some, uh, somewhat newer, but not very new, so from the first Estonian Republic who made the, in the 1930s the, a series of illustrations, very original illustrations of, of uh, Kreuzfeldt's color work. Now I have here, we, we translated with Harvey Hicks only a small fragment of uh, translated the, the full Estonian translations are by Estonians in emigration, yes, uh, Estonians in emigration. There are two, two full translations uh, in English. Uh, as you see, even the exterior form, you see Estonian verse line is much, uh, much, much shorter, shorter. And uh, English is, uh, although English is always a very economic and compressed uh, uh, language uh, with, uh, with very brief words, English uh, is still looks uh, it looks longer, English verse line looks longer, and if, you, if we want to transmit the whole content uh, in the same uh, metric, uh, trochaic, uh, trochi is the, is the basic uh, finno ugric uh, metric, quis on leina lepi kuida, kus on leina lepi kuida, this is the, uh, the four feet uh, trochi. 
ahastuse, haavikuide, kõrvastuse, kuusikuide, kahetsuse, kaasikuide, kus ma leinan, kasab lepik, kus ma ahastan, seal haavik, kus on kurba, kasab kuusik, kahetsed varjab kaasik, oh, minu helle ei tekene, kes mind arvule kasvatasid, kätte peal mind kiigutasid, suu juures suigutasid, pidid üksi sure maie, nägemate närtsi maie, kes sul vaatas silmad kinni, kes sul litsas kulmud kokku, sidilil sul sulges silmad, kas tein sul katis kulmud, oh, mu hella heidekene, sinilille sala hokkad, kas tein alt karvad karedad. So, although it is four feet trokaik bite, may sound a bit monotonous, but it is not the great poets, also the compiler of Kalevala, and the Slendrat, they both used also variations, and not only trochees, but also dactyls, for instance, and kasteina karvat kareda, this is a dactylic rhythm, not trochaic rhythm. So there is variety, and what I wish to show this fragment from Kalevwag's Canto 7, Kalevwag sings as he mourns for his mother Linda, Kalevvaks mother is Linda, and the whole epic is the search of the raped mother, Linda, Linda, Linda. So practically, uh, it is very different from other epics and very different, absolutely different from, from uh, Finnish Kalevala. Kreuzfeld's uh, uh, epic is uh, uh, a tragic epic, really, of a small nation, a nation fighting uh, against uh, foreign invaders and uh, foreign oppression and humiliation that comes from, uh, from, from foreigners, uh, foreign, uh, of course, um, foreign, uh, foreign troops and military, military uh, superiority imposed uh, by force, uh, crude force, but also uh, Kalevvaeg also fights uh, uh, the devil uh, fights the devil, the devil, the devil, yes, the lord of the, of the shadows, the lord of the shadows, and he also descend, descends into, into hell, into hell, into underworld, and, uh, and so all these uh, things he is uh, fighting with the devil. The devil is incarnation of, of human greed, greed, human greed, and uh, this is also as uh, autocritical, uh, verses and lines, and so this is, uh, uh, so the, the, there are, there are, there are just the search for mother, uh, mother, and, and uh, very important part of women, uh, starting from the fact that uh, Kreuzfeld uh, created this epic in, the, in this finno ugric in, in the verse form of finno ugric uh, uh, um, <coughs> Uh, the folk song uh, the, and Finno Ugric folk song in Estonia was uh, uh, basically the work of, of our women, our women, so uh, uh, were the main creators, main authors, in difference with the Scandinavian skulls and uh, well, thereby also masculine male, male, male authors and poets. So this is the difference, a very strong strong uh, women's presence in, and, uh, and the general tonality is uh, uh, ele elegiac, elegiac, uh, elegy, elegy tonality. This is the lyrical, lyrical tragic tonality that, uh, that uh, overwhelms, uh, although there are also humorous uh, episodes and so on, and uh, Graceful has a very good sense of humor, and sometimes uh, uh, later, <laughs> later, Researchers have not underst understood uh, his, uh, this great variety of tonalities and, and the greatness, the real greatness of the work. Uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, there is uh, still a lot to be uh, researched in, in, in Kalevi work, although there have been some, some good researchers, but also a lot of simplification, and especially <laughs> maybe the, the, the final part uh, when uh, yes, Kalevvoeg, uh, Kalevvoeg, oh, okay, I, I will not, uh, yes, I, I feel that <laughs> I'm already nearing the end of my time. So anyway, yes, uh, this is a long topic and I cannot uh, speak of everything and I haven't uh, taken any, any ready-made text uh, to read and so soon I will, I will finish, but I will still uh, show you at least uh, this uh, 
a young lady also, one woman, and I always uh, say that uh, this is something, there is some uh, parallels with the, uh, with the American, uh, North American literature, United States literature, in the sense that they had in their, in their beginning uh, of their own American literature, Edgar Allan Poe, Walt Whitman, and Emily Dickinson. And one flower, one lady between these, uh, among uh, these, uh, these uh, two men, uh, beside these two men, and also in Estonia, we had Peterson, Greuswald, and then our, our Lydia, this of Kaleb, Kaleb in Hell's Gate, and uh, this is a very fascinating, and the philosophy is not simpler than Goethe's philosophy, I would say. This is a very, very, very complicated symbolics of, of and still has to be researched by, by semiotics uh, scholars and so on. A lot, lot to be done, and this is the lady, Lydia Koidula, Lydia Koidula, and um, Kreuzwald in his old days um, fell in love with, with Koidula, and they had letter exchange and, 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 and good relations, and uh, Lydia Koidula was there, the bright star, uh, bright star of Estonian uh, awakening period, uh, the most, uh, the brightest star of Estonian awakening periods who were in, in her patriotic songs, uh, uh, <coughs> passionately protested against the past humiliation and, and oppression and, uh, and invasions and so on. And, and uh, this, uh, this is a song of liberty that uh, she sang the song of liberty in all, all her uh, poems I will now uh, there are parallels with my own life. I, I, uh, uh, her youth was, um, he, he, she went to school in Pernu. Pernu. This is uh, not in Tartu, Tartu, but in Pernu, and I'm also from Pernu. And so only um, nearly a hundred years later, I went to uh, the school uh, that uh, had the name of Lydia Koidula. I went to Koidula school, school and then we, we always uh, gathered there on this Koidula Square. And the next is also my uh, picture, I want uh, photo here, Koidula Square to sing uh, or, to, or to recite Koidula's poems and or to sing the, the, her famous, uh, famous uh, uh, poems uh, that were, have been made into songs. In, in Tartu, there is only a very, very new monument in 2018 by sculptor Mikov and Bruder Katak, uh, just the, on, the, on the other uh, side of the uh, footwalk, uh, foot, Footwalkers Bridge, bridge here, very, very close. Uh, you, you can notice, or maybe you have uh, not noticed to have thought uh, who were they. But uh, Koidula's uh, father was the founder of Estonian journalism. Uh, journal of the main, uh, the, of the first Estonian daily newspapers. He was the founder of a Estonia's famous song festivals and, and, and so on. A, a culturally, a very broad-minded man. And, uh, and the daughter was absolutely talented and she became to be called the nightingale of Emma Yegi and, and, and uh, the singer of the dawn and, and uh, uh, Koidula Aulik and uh, Koidula and, and so on. But now the, I, the famous poem, and, and I, will, I will finish here. Um, th this uh, has been turned into, into a song by, uh, and this is a, a, a song by Gustav Ernesax. And this is almost, uh, let's say, a parallel, parallel uh, national anthem, not the official anthem, the official anthem as the as the uh, voice of of of, uh, of the father of, of, of Koidula, Janssen, but uh, this is Koidula's poem, and uh, all the song festivals when the choirs gather from all parts of Estonia when they sing it, you notice they have tears in their eyes and uh, and, and so on. So this is very em emotional. A simple poem, but uh, this is the Koidula's, uh, this is the charm of Koidula's poem that even in this very simple way, she could uh, absolutely perfectly uh, transmit emotion. Ma isa maa minu arm, ma isa maa minu arm, kel südant annud maa, sul laulam maa, ma üle mõnn võitsev Eesti maas, 
see valu südames mul keeb, see on ja rõõm mind rõõmsaks teeb ma isama. Ma isama minu arm ei teda jätama ja peaks seda survama, see pärast surema. Kas laime põere kadedus, sa siis kelad südames ma isama. Ja ta on... The final strophe is, ma isama minu arm ja tahan puhkada, sa rüppe heidan unele ma püha Eesti maa, sa linnu tundbul laulavad. Ma põrbust lilled õitsetad, ma isama. Ma heumlandis ma laue and I wish to rest. I lie down to sleep in your lap, my sacred Estonian land. Your birds will sing me to sleep from my ashes, your flowers will bloom my homeland. Thank you. That's all <laughs> from me today. And uh, <clears throat> I, I had in mind to speak more, uh, but, uh, but you will find. I, I guess I will show you now some, something. Uh, yes, I, uh, that's, I, uh, this is uh, the fourth, uh, fourth personality and poet is Johan Lee. I have uh, studied in depth his uh, poetry and and I've written a monograph and, and uh, published his, uh, his uh, anthologies and, and I've also been participated in the recent translations of his books into English, uh, Spanish, Italian, and uh, German, and uh, samples and so on. But uh, I will not speak here, but I will show also and also yesterday I took a picture of another very important uh, personality, that is uh, uh, August Kitzberg, the, the founder of uh, the first uh, great uh, Estonian drama writer, drama writer, so playwright, uh, Estonian playwright. But here you can find in the, in the new Estonian, Estonian um, uh, online dictionary of Estonian writers, you can fi find a lot of more information. So you just have a look at this is something also very new that we are doing and, uh, and it is not yet finished, but anyway, the, you can find the most complete, you can find this uh, data and all the description in English, by the way, this is in English, in the framework is English. Later we may be also, uh, also do the same in Estonian, but at, uh, at present, uh, first we try to do in English because it is most urgently needed to show something of our great literature uh, also those to those people who, who might be interested and I very much hope they, uh, there are more and more people who are, are interested but at present uh, maybe they still don't know enough uh, Estonian language. So that's all. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, I will leave the slides for a moment. So yeah, if yeah. there is something else yes, yes, you yeah, want to show, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have more minutes. Yes, if yes, you want please. To show. Yeah. But does uh, anybody have uh, questions oh, for yes, Professor I'll... Talvat? Yes, I'll bring the microphone to you so yeah, you can yeah. ask. Uh, professor, great presentation, even though I knew most of those parts because, like, I travel throughout Estonia and I read the contents on these uh, statues. And, yeah, so I wanted to ask, um, do you consider uh, Jak Christian, Christian Jak Peterson and Kreuzwald to be, like, the Arcadian poets, like, you know, uh, who were inspired by, let's say, Virgil? Can you categorize them like that? Because, like, I know Christian Jak Peterson uh, went from Tartu to Riga by foot. He was famous for that. Yes, and uh, she, she writes because I have hearing problem. Any, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. So, so but uh, it is not always, but um, from this new, new millennium, I have <laughs> hearing problem. Early I heard well, but, but now I, I don't hear. Yeah. Yes, uh, <coughs> no, yeah, okay. yes, uh, yes, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, really, uh, really better than better, better than, yes, uh, of this uh, small number of poems that he wrote, uh, most are of this uh, Arcadi Arcadian or, or this, uh, let's say, pastoral, pastoral framework is the, uh, these, um, 
eclogues, eclogues, eclogue is a form in dialogue, dialogue, and then the, the, these uh, shepherds, uh, shepherd boys and girls speak with each other and, and, um, and show their feelings and so. So this is, uh, but it is Estonian, all is Estonian, and, and uh, Pettersson uh, avoided, consciously avoided, uh, uh, let's say, classical uh, Roman, uh, Greek Roman mythology, and, um, but he, he, he was interested in, in Finnish uh, mythology, but um, really he even uh, started to translate uh, uh, work, uh, a book of, uh, on uh, Finnish mythology from Swedish into Estonian. Uh, uh, Swedish, no, 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 not, sorry, not Estonian. Uh, all Pettersson's, uh, let's say, uh, learned uh, uh, research or scientific work on, on the Estonian language was written in German. He, he started to translate this from Swedish into German, into German. So you see, he was between many languages, some nine languages in knew. So, and, uh, and Pettersson, yes, uh, uh, for, uh, and he was, uh, yes, he was moving between, uh, because his parents were in, in Riga, Riga, and he is very, uh, he has very cordial poems dedicated to his parents also, and the respect for the parents and, <clears throat> and predecessors and so on. So one, uh, and he says that also he likes uh, uh, Tartu, but he loves uh, loves uh, his parents. Parents are more important even than <laughs> he likes Estonia uh, being here, of course, and and so on. But uh, so he really studied here only scarcely two years or so at uh, Tartu University. But he absorbed everything with absolute um, facility and very quickly, and so was very mature in, in his uh, uh, only 21 years. This is a miracle, I would say. This is even Keats uh, could, uh, could still live 26 years. I think Keats was uh, uh, John Keats, uh, the English, British, uh, great poet. And Byron, uh, they were all very, very, very young, really. And Shelley was uh, 20, uh, 29, and, and Byron was the oldest, so to say, oldest, uh, only <laughs> 36 years old when Byron, Lord Byron, died. So you understand, maybe younger people don't know much about Byron anymore, but anyway, these were great times of poetry. And so, yeah, please. Yeah, I have another question. Um, why didn't you enlist um, this uh, August Geilit? He was like famous for his um, novel, Thomas Nippernadi, and his travels. It, it, they, they could also be archaic, Arcadi, uh, had Arcadian motives. No, no, Estonia has, uh, you, if you open that uh, uh, Estonian, uh, Evo, the Estonian uh, writer's online dictionary, Evo, then you see that uh, we have already, we're nearing to some 500, 500 uh, uh, um, profiles of authors and pages of authors with the data about all their translations, then you please consult this about uh, Gailit and Nippernadi and, and so on. We don't, uh, but in this sense of the founders of Estonian literature, well, Gailit is a much later man, a younger man. This, uh, we are, our culture is very young, so who, who might uh, uh, look uh, or seem to you uh, old, old is really in a in a young uh, culture. So, Gailit is in the 1930s and so on. And, and there are there are Tamsar and so, so many Wilde and so on. And I only in passing mentioned that um, uh, Kitzberg, uh, Kitzberg, yes, was of the same generation of of Johann Liev, and uh, they were at the start of the uh, 20th century. And Kitzberg, uh, Kitzberg, the man whom I show briefly, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his, yes, his, uh, his, uh, his burial stones uh, of uh, gravestone, gravestone. I went uh, 
yesterday there to, to make a, fo a picture, picture of that. And I put, you see, I put a small candle also, I lit a small candle at his, at his grave. Uh, this was really, his uh, work is uh, unequal, but uh, he has created one great play that is among the most, uh, most, most successful plays, uh, plays of Estonian uh, theatre uh, of all times uh, until today. This is uh, the werewolf, Lipa Hunt, the werewolf, and, and, uh, and this has been staged so, so many times in Estonia, and, uh, and a lot of it has been written, but still, still, I'm unfortunate to see that uh, even newer researchers do not understand <laughs> the essence, the philosophic essence of that plan. Kitzberg, Kitzberg, a great, a great play, yes. Uh, now, uh, I'm glad to say that uh, just a good friend, uh, a lady, um, a Chinese lady uh, is, uh, has uh, almost finished the translation of, of, of Lipa Hunt, uh, Werewolf, into Chinese language, and uh, I hope that it could be staged in China. China. And, and there are also Estonian directors, uh, stage directors, um, who still do good things and, uh, and uh, could uh, go there to China to stage it. And so, yes, uh, theater is a, a big part of Estonia, and uh, the one of the theater, of course, is is uh, here in Tartu, and, and so on. Uh, more and more could be could be said about uh, Tartu, and so on. Tartu is a very special town, as you have understood, that uh, and, and, uh, not the capital city, but having the main university, although the university as such um, has also its problems at any time and at any period, but uh, somehow it, it, it still drags on and, and, <laughs> and I hope it, it goes on for a long time still. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question in the auditorium? Uh, there is an observation in the chat um, Amelia Lewis uh, was. No, somebody is. Yes. Uh, Amelia Lewis uh, wrote, it's an observation instead of a question, but uh, these uh, verses are so beautiful. A lot of Estonian culture uh, seems that way. Uh, in comparison, although my knowledge of Estonian folklore and literature is limited, English folklore, although exciting and interesting, is often very dark and eerie. Thank you, thank you for this <coughs> opinion. Yes, I share it too. <laughs> there are and great authors, and uh, yeah, 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 lyrical and also the epic, uh, epic um, Kalevag is uh, rich uh, in its uh, in its uh, lyrical content. Also, and this is a very exceptional thanks to the great presence of women, of women there. So, yes, so um, yeah, yes, yes, of course, yeah. Yes, yes uh, leave, leave about leave. Of course, I could uh, give a special, <laughs> special lecture because this is my has been, been my special interest. I have, I've uh, since uh, 2007 more or less I started to deal with the leaves uh, poetry in detail, and uh, so I can say, uh, as we are, I'm not many, so I'm the third person who has uh, researched all the leaves uh, manuscripts of of. of a, of the poetry that was left in manuscripts and studied all the, the different versions and so on. The, so the first was Friede Bart Douglas, uh, Douglas, and he was the who, who lifted uh, leave to the center of attention and, and fame. Fame, and, uh, and then after the Second World War was Arne Winkel, who made a very valuable work and, and corrected uh, Douglas's mistakes and so on. And now I have been the third, the third to deal in depth with. Uh, in greater depths with uh, Leaves uh, poetry, especially Leaves poetry, although, of course, um, Leaves is also quite good as a, as a prose writer, and especially one short novel is, that is his uh, best work that is called uh, Shadow. Shadow is in, in Estonian, Vari. Vari, this is a brilliant work, and now I, I try, I try to help, help uh, col collaborate in, in its uh, translation into, into English, uh, but we don't know yet if we get that far. 
no translation in English. Uh, until today, there are only translation of that work, uh, Vari, about uh, 100 pages, not, uh, not long. Vari of Estonian past and uh, strong symbols, but uh, nothing um, simplified and very, very, very powerful, powerful narrative. So, uh, so uh, the only tra existing translations are, are in Russian, in, uh, in Esperanto. No, no. Yeah, in Esperanto. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it in Esperanto? Yes, probably it, it was in Esperanto. And, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the only uh, new translation is in Dutch language, uh, thanks to the enthusiasm of a Dutch lady whom I know, and, and she translated it. Uh, she was uh, a student of, or studied uh, Estonian with, with, um, with uh, Cornelius Hasselblad, who is a descendant of the Baltic, uh, Baltic Germans and, uh, and knows well Estonian language and, and in, in Groningen. So, um, yes, uh, a lot has to be done, st done still, because uh, simply <laughs> the language uh, barrier and uh, the fact that uh, not much has been translated, but still we have something we have already and we'll try to continue. Yes, and one more question in the chat uh, here. Uh, Mikaela writes, I'm an actor and was struck by the vast stretches of vowels, which in theatre walls are where the emotions live. It's no wonder her most famous poem evokes such emotion in people, not just from the content, but the literal opening of the voice to expre es express such emotions. Has there been any exploration of the uses of consonant and vowel combinations on the body in the oral performance of poetry? Well, I, I, I guess uh, that <clears throat> oral performance of poetry is, uh, is um, surely important and, and we have lots of very good actors uh, who can read much, much better than I, <laughs> I do it, but, but um, and so, uh, yes, um, I think, um, and uh, leaves to poetry and all this is, uh, is in Estonia, it is very, very widely, widely known, and, and uh, more and more there are, yeah, especially uh, about the leave and the, about Koidula, there are many plays also, many people have, have tried to, uh, write plays, uh, but uh, there are also some difficulties, some difficulties, uh, uh, especially with Johan Liev, Johan Liev, because, uh, uh, yes, yeah, about Johan Liev, I may only add that the, the most important that is about Johan Liev is that uh, uh, he, in, uh, in, uh, 19, uh, in 1893, he, he fell mentally ill he had suffered from a schizophrenia, schizophrenia, and he was a, our madman, so to say. We were known as our, our dear mad, mad poet. Poet. He, um, there are all kinds of jokes, etc., about his doings, and uh, as, as as a madman, and, uh, and it is true. But uh, but unfortunately, uh, this. Uh, this is uh, the, the idea of leave uh, did not uh, go much beyond that, uh, that uh, uh, madman who by a miracle wrote wonderful poems. That was the main idea of uh, Friede Bertuglas who, who first published his poems and um, uh, from the manuscripts and so on. So on. But I have tried to just to turn attention to the philosophical, uh, to leave as a thinker, as a leave uh, as a thinker. He did not uh, attend any university. He was a self-made uh, think, uh, thinker, uh, uh, free thinker, uh, just as Walt Whitman, the same type of a poet, uh, poet thinker, poet philosopher as Walt Whitman, and Walt Whitman, as you saw, is tremendous influ influential in the, in the whole world poetry, and there's so many um, later po poets have, have dedication to him, uh, Fernando Pessoa and, and, uh, and uh, Federico Garcia Lorca and the greatest poems, and so on. But uh, Johan Liev, too, is, uh, has, has the great potentiality 
And uh, now I try to turn attention to this uh, philosophic that uh, there is uh, uh, beneath his uh, poems, uh, there is a very coherent uh, philosophic, uh, uh, coherent philosophic attitudes, attitudes, but I don't have time. Uh, I have, uh, I, 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 I took this uh, book, this is my, my own book, uh, the, it is called uh, Ten Letters to Montaigne, the French uh, thinker Montaigne. And here I speak also about Johann Liev. And in, in chapter two, you have, I have tried to resume, let's say, what for me is the Johann Liev's uh, philosophy. And, and, and these, uh, but uh, of course, uh, you may find it at the university library, this uh, find 10 letters to Montaigne, and you'll find there are some copies in, uh, at the big library.